Hello students, how are you all? Myself Sanat Kumar, I am here to present to you regarding a topic in cell biology. The topic is ultrastructure and functions of ribosomes. Students, if you all remember when we met in the last class, actually we were talking about the different cell organelles. In that I discussed regarding the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi operators and also ultrastructure and function of the mitochondria. Okay, so in this video, I would like to explain to you uh, regarding the um, ultrastructure and functions of the ribosome. Okay, now let us start the uh, lecture with a brief introduction. What are ribosomes? They are small, dense, rounded, and granular particles of the ribonucleoproteins. So they may occur freely in the matrix of the mitochondria, chloroplast, and cytoplasm. So we all know very well the ribosomes are the cell organelles that are found either in the cytoplasm or in the matrix of the uh, chloroplast and the mitochondria. So we, well, we are very well acquainted with the function of the ribosome, which is very important with respect to the protein synthesis. So we are going to see about what is the detailed structure of, ultra structure of this ribosome. Okay, so the ribosomes, when we look at them in the cytosol, they may remain attached to the uh, membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, or to the membrane of the nucleus okay so this is the uh, cartoonized uh, structure of the ribosome where you can see the small and the large subunit of the ribosome associated with the mrna so the main intention of the class is to explain regarding the ultra structure of the ribosome so when you look at the ultra structure of the ribosome so the ribosome itself has a outer structure of spheroid in nature and it measures about 150 to 250 Armstrong units in diameter. So when we consider the size of the ribosome, it measures about 150 to 250 Armstrong units. Very importantly, the ribosome, as you have seen in the previous picture, it has two important subunits. Number one a larger subunit and the other one a smaller subunit. So uh, uh, students, when we've discussed regarding the cell biology in the very first class, I was talking to you regarding the existence of two different types of cells, the prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cells. We distinguished between them the various differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic uh, cells. One of the major difference that we have seen is in the type of the ribosome that is present in these cells. Okay, So if you look at the prokaryotic ribosomes, there are 70S ribosomes and in eukaryotes, there are 80S ribosomes. Now, in the prokaryotes, the 70S ribosomes consist of two subunits. Number first one, that is the 50S subunit and the second one, 30S subunit. Okay, So in eukaryotes, as I said, they have 80s ribosomes and the 80s ribosomes are made up of 60 and 40s ribosomal subunits okay so if you can see this is the uh, cartoon representing the ribosomal organization okay so now there are two important units of ribosomes one is a small subunit and large subunit and Majorly, the ribosomes are made up of two important components. One is the ribosomal RNA, another one is the proteins. Okay, so we are going to see in this picture what we are seeing is the presence of different types of ribosomal RNA and the proteins. I would like to come back to this slide again. We shall see what is the detailed structure of it. Now, the 60S ribosomal subunit, always in the ribosome, the 60S ribosomal subunit, it remains attached to the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. It may be attached to the 
membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum or it may be attached to the nuclear membrane okay so um the 40s subunit occurs above the larger subunit so when they are assembled the ribosomal subunits are assembled the 40s subunits present above the uh, 60s subunit like a cap okay so that is the assembled structure and the two subunits remain attached to each other when when they are remain attached either in presence of high concentration of magnesium ions or during protein synthesis under these two conditions we see the ribosomal subunits are assembled together okay so during protein synthesis uh, when we uh, see the central dogma in genetics so molecular biology the protein synthesis process during that we see the aggregation of ribosomes along with the mrna this aggregation of ribosomes along with the mrna is termed as a poly ribosomes or it is also termed as polysomes okay so you can see in this picture assembly of the ribosomes during the protein synthesis process okay now chemical composition if you come to the chemical composition of the ribosome as i have already told you the ribosome is majorly made up of two important components number one rna and the second one proteins okay so both occur in equal proportions in smaller as well as larger subunit and of course there is slight difference when it comes to the prokaryotes in the um, when it comes to the 70s ribosomes of the prokaryotes the rna is more in these ribosomes so that means there, there is around 60 to 40 percent of rna that we see in 70s ribosomes and the proteins are around 36 percent okay so in eukaryotic uh, ribosomes 80s ribosomes we see there is less amount of rna that is around 40 percent and there is more proteins that are present okay so around 60 percent so as we have seen in the other uh, uh, cell organelle structures the we do not see the presence of uh, uh, lipids in case of the ribosomes okay so this is also again it is talking about two important subunits that are present in the ribosomes each subunit whether it is a small subunit or a large subunit further it is made up of smaller particles of ribosomal rna you shall see this now so look at this flow chart now i have categorized the prokaryotic ribosome and the eukaryotic ribosome so as we have seen in the previous slide pro prokaryotic ribosomes are made up of 70s uh, um, type and eukaryotic ribosomes are 80s type so they are made up of 50 30 and here it is 60 40 now what about the 50s ribosomal subunit it is made up of two important types of rna number one 23s and 5s along with that there are 34 proteins okay so and 30s uh, subunit it is made up of 16s ribosomal rna associated with 21 proteins students remember the uh, ribosomes they consist of around 55 proteins okay so they are distributed differently in different subunits if you come to the 80s subunits as you can see the 60s subunit is made up of three different types of ribosomal rna now number one the 5s 5.8s and 28s ribosomal rna along with that we can see there is assembly of 50 different proteins okay so coming to the 40s subunit of eukaryotes it has only 18s ribosomal rna and there is 30 different proteins that are associated with this rna okay so in this picture also you can clearly visualize how the large and the small subunit presence of different ribosomal uh, rnas and you can see in the first one 23s and 5s assembled together forming the larger subunit and during the uh, protein synthesis the large and the small subunit getting associated very beautifully explained in this cartoon picture okay so let us go to the next slide now so if you consider the ultra structure of the ribosome two important component as i said one is rna another one is a protein so if you look at the ribosomal rna now in 70s ribosomes of prokaryotes there are three types of rna as i have shown in the previous uh, flowchart just go through these points these points clearly explain the 
the one, two, three. These three points clearly explain the number of uh, ribosomal subunits that are assembled to form the large and the small subunits. Okay, so go back to the uh, previous chart and go through these points clearly. Okay, so the uh, about sixty percent of the ribosomal RNA that is present, it is present in the form of a helical RNA. So it is helical in its. Uh, uh, organization and why this helical structure, the helical structure of the RRNA in ribosomes is due to presence of the paired bases. Okay, so uh, RNA, as you all know, it is a single standard structure, we say usually. And if it is showing a helical structure, definitely it forms a kind of looping, and that loop is what is known as the hairpin loops. There is presence of hairpin loops in the ribosomal. RNA. Okay. And now, if you look at the gross ultra structure of the ribosome, the on the ribosome, the RNA molecules are exposed at the surface of the ribosomal subunits, and the proteins that are present, which are present interior in relation to the non-helical part of the RNA. So remember, the RNA is exposed to the surface, and the proteins that are associated, they are present interiorly in association at the places where we don't see the helical organization. So there's a picture I would like to show you well, what is the structure of a messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA and the transfer RNA. So this is what we are uh, talking about. You here you can see the hairpin loops that are formed. So bringing about what is known as the helical structure. Now, the second component of the ultra structure of the ribosomes is the proteins, okay? so. Now, what kind of proteins that we can see? As I have told you before in that flow chart, the ribosomes, we were able to recognize, isolate around 55 different uh, ribosomal proteins, okay? So in these 55 proteins, around 21 different protein molecules, uh, we are uh, able to see in 30S subunit and around 34 different protein molecules we can see in the 50S ribosomal subunit. So what is this? Uh, uh, what is the role of this uh, ribosomal protein? So the, usually the ribosomal proteins play a catalytic function uh, in the RR, uh, RRNA in ribosomes. Okay, so they have a catalytic function. Now, along with the RNA and the proteins in the ribosomes, there are also low molecular weight components called metallic. Ions. What kind of metallic ions? It may be magnesium, calcium, or manganese ions. Clear? Now, so we can see in this picture how exactly uh, the proteins and the RNA is getting organized to form the ribosomes. So you can see the loopings here very well. The protein organization and the RNA on the surface, you can see the presence of RNA and the protein that is. Associated, associated with the RNA. Now, so during the protein synthesis, the process of uh, translation in the molecular uh, biology, so uh, we have studied that the small subunit and the large subunit assembles. When we look at that picture, there are four important sites that we are able to recognize on the assembled um, ribosome that is number one, the mRNA binding site in the smaller subunit. Number two, A site or the amino acyl site. P site or peptidyl site. E site or the exit site where uncharged RNA comes. So we are able to better understand these points by looking at this picture. So this is the larger subunit. This is the smaller subunit. We can see the presence of different uh, uh, pockets here there are three pockets actually one is a pocket p pocket and e pocket so let us see uh, see this it is the a this is the p and it is the e pocket the trna uh, comes to the a pocket and uh, gets unloaded in the p pocket and uh, the spent trna goes to the e pocket okay so the, we are not uh, much worried about the process of translation here but we should understand during the process of translation, the larger subunit and smaller subunit, they have different structures. This is the first one that we saw in the previous slide. That is the 
So this point mRNA binding site for the RNA. So this is the mRNA binding site which is in the smaller subunit and this is the A site, B site and E site that are present. Okay. Now that is uh, regarding the uh, ultra structure of the ribosomes. Now the second part of the uh, ribosomal structure and function topic it is the functions of the uh, ribosomes. Now first and most important function of the ribosome they are in fact termed as protein factories. The major role of the ribosomes is in the synthesis of the protein secretory pathway. Now the ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis. They provide the necessary enzymes and the required ambient in atmosphere for the protein synthesis. Along with that free ribosomes, the uh, assembled ribosomes associated with the protein synthesis. Now the free ribosomes that are present in the cytoplasm, they synthesize structural and enzymatic proteins for use inside the cell and the attached ribosomes synthesize transport proteins. Usually attached ribosomes in the sense they are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. So these uh, ribosomes, they transfer, they synthesize what is known as the transport proteins. Okay. Now, uh, along with that, ribosomes also provide enzymes and the factors for the condensation of amino acids to form polypeptides. Okay. So now we can see in this picture, they have shown this is the DNA. This is the RNA formed by the transcription process and the RNA undergoes translation to form the protein. So here, during the process of transferring information from RNA to protein, we need the cell organelle ribosome. Now, the, this is a GIF that I got. So you, you can see the tRNA bringing the amino acid coming to the A pocket and spending delivering its amino acid beautiful uh, GIF it is uh, so the delivering the amino acid here and get the spent tRNA moving away okay so in this uh, same way picture the DNA RNA formation the mRNA is getting associated with the uh, ribosomes so the ribosomes are forming the protein this is the mRNA and this is the protein that is formed now, apart from the protein synthesis, the RNA also plays a role in providing attachment points for mRNA and tRNA and a newly synthesized polypeptide. So when the uh, process of uh, protein synthesis or translation is going on, the newly for nascent protein that is formed in the cytoplasm may be prone to the action of the cytoplasmic enzymes. And these nascent proteins are very well protected by the ribosomes before they acquire the secondary structure okay now so this is all regarding uh, um, the ultra structure and function of the ribosome okay so i will uh, post the same video in the youtube channel my youtube channel learn zoology with sanat and please view the youtube channel and subscribe and like the video thank you for watching